Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome into this episode of Flippin' Bats. We got a ton to talk about today. We got winners and losers from the month of August, since it is September 1st. Also, Immaculate Grid, things that make you go, hmm. We'll also be joined by Disha Thosar, a writer here for MLB on Fox, to talk all things Pete Alonzo, the toxic rumors, trade rumors, everything going on there, as well as a tale of the tape with the Braves and Dodgers. This one's going to be a blast. Let's get to it. Fly ball onto the track. At the wall. It's gone. Home run. Turns on a ball. Deep right field. And gone. What a game. What a moment. Happy Friday, my friends. I am joined, as always, by Alex Curry. And Alex, we got a good weekend of baseball starting, some great series. Obviously, our tail of the tape is Braves-Dodgers. That series started on Thursday. But fun fact, everyone, we don't record on Thursday night at 10.30 p.m., so the game hasn't had, we don't know what happened in that first game yet. But <laughs> don't give our secrets away. You're not supposed to dude, say that. I wonder if people really think, like, they're recording at 11 after the yeah, game. Maybe. Yeah, honesty. Honesty. Okay, you're just bringing honesty hour into honesty. every show Honesty. We don't now. know what happened in that Thursday every game because it hasn't happened yet. Hey, we, we don't need to go into that. It's September. We're saying it's September because <laughs> it's Friday, which is crazy because now it's the final push for the playoffs. We're like, it's not the dog days of summer anymore. Like this is the make or break time for the teams that are kind of on that bubble to get into the playoffs. It's also, I think my one year anniversary on the show today. I joined September. September. I joined in September. Wow. We did it. We did it. Fun times. You did. <laughs> All right. <laughs> not well, sick of me. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> You're out of here. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. Cause I got back from Japan. Yeah. And, and it was end football. of August it was start and of football. then started. Yeah. Yeah. You got mad at me for wearing my Ram shirt after they were champions on the show because I was wearing a football shirt on a baseball show. I remember everything by based on what I was wearing, which is a really weird thing of how I can I can tell you what game I was <laughs> me at. Me too. What day it was based on what I was oh, wearing. Oh, man, I was wearing weird a bomber fact. jacket that day. Weird, yeah, because that's all you have and that's all you that's wear. That's a joke. All right, fine. That's all that's I wear. Fair. That's fair. Okay, so we mentioned <laughs> this is kind of like this is it. This is the final month, the final push. Yeah. So let's take a look back at the month of August and talk about the three biggest winners and the three biggest losers of August. Let's start with winners. Yeah. Hi, no. You want to start However happy? You we'll start with winners and we'll start with number three, the Cubs. Yeah. The Cubs had a really good month and the Cubs this season have had, it's almost like a roller coaster of a year, right? You had the, the beginning where it started off really good and then they went through it down and it was like, okay, Cubs aren't quite there yet. And now, with the August that they've had, they've played themselves back into a playoff spot. 18 and 9 in the month. Before the month started, they were in third place in the NL Central. They're now in second within reach of, of the Brewers there, who have been playing really well of late. But I really like this Cubs team. I really like what they did at the in the offseason yeah. to make them better. And I really like that they didn't become sellers at the deadline. And they went for it, and now... Uh, I think they can get into the playoffs. I, I, Justin Steele, uh, Justin Steele is one of the most underrated pitchers in baseball. He's having a fantastic year. Alzali at the back end of the bullpen, one of the best closers. They have the makings of being a, a playoff team. I think they can get into the playoffs, and the August that they just had has uh, certainly helped them. Oh, yeah. All right, moving on to number two. <laughs> The second best team in baseball. One of the best teams in August. They just went on an absolute tear. The Dodgers. Yeah, look, the Dodgers aren't here. The Dodgers had the best. It was a historic yeah. month of August. But the reason they're at number two for me is because, well, they were first in the NL West, and now they're still just more in first in yeah, the NL West. double-digit lead. Yeah, now it's a double-digit lead. They are winning the division. It was the Dodgers, not just this year. Every year. The Dodgers in August are just a team you don't want to play. No. They do not lose in August, and this year was a prime example of that. And uh, they joined the 2002 Oakland A's as the only teams in the expansion era to win 24-plus games in the month of August. That's pretty crazy. Good. Oh, no, that's incredible. Pretty, pretty good. So, yeah, uh, just a historic month of August for the Dodgers, which is why they are here. But 
when we get to number one, yeah. it'll make sense why I have them too. Because they probably made the biggest jump to where they are now just in the month of August yeah. at number one, the Seattle Mariners. Yes. The Mariners started the month in uh, not in a playoff spot. And no. in fact, not looking great in the division. No. They were in fourth place at the beginning of this month in the AL West. And now here we are, September 1st. And you got the Mariners at the top of that AOS leading the division, certainly looking good for the playoffs, uh, the best record ever in the month of August for the Seattle Mariners. Best month ever. <laughs> Seattle secures their 21st win in August to set a franchise record for the winningest month. Look, you, you had a lot going on with this Mariners team this yeah. month. What Julio was doing, what the pitching Crazy staff history. was doing. You had the beginning of the month, all the questions of like, what did they do at the trade deadline? Like, I am kind of confused. And now they just have like the best vibes ever in yeah. that clubhouse. And th they're rolling. They're playing really good baseball. Fun differentials off the charts with this team. So yeah, 21 and six. But the reason they're number one, and I, I know record and, and the Dodgers had a better month. Yeah. But the fact that they weren't even close in the division and on the outside looking in at the playoffs and, and now they're in the driver's seat and, and looking in that AOS and, and looking great for the playoffs. Just quite the month for them. This is the month that turned the Mariners season around. It's just crazy to think that, I mean, in my mindset, I kind of had at the trade deadline, you had the Angels and the Mariners kind of in that same position. They were both outside looking in and it was going to be a long shot if either of them were going to kind of make it into the top part of the AOS. Angels went all in. Mariners didn't do anything. Angels went the bed immediately, and Mariners just completely like took off and had their best month ever. Did you say so. wet the bed? Is that what you went with? Yeah. <laughs> the Angels wet the bed. <laughs> you can't keep the dang Angels from pissing in their bed. That's, that's a saying, right? <laughs> I mean, it is a no? saying. <laughs> okay. What's yours? Flash, flash fry pan? Flash <laughs> fry pan. No, it was flash in the pan. And you immediately okay. texted me the next day, like, oh, I've heard this a few times. Well, since no, you said I was it. on the herd and Nick Wright used it. And I was like, literally, I've never heard the saying, and now I've heard it twice in two days. You're welcome. So it was a saying. It is. Okay. So there's one other team I probably would have put in this for winners the Phillies. Yeah. Because they also just kind of went off and completely got themselves back into a wild card spot. Bryce Harper's locked in, hit his 300th career home run, having an incredible season at first base for the first time. They would have been, I think, one of mine. They would have. Yeah, so I just wanted to. Out? Cubs. Um, Cubs. Yeah. Yeah, I would have flip flopped. Okay. All right, let's switch to the losers. Okay. Okay. Starting at number three, <laughs> and uh, we're sticking in the the AL West. We ended in the AL West, and we are starting the losers in the AL West, and it is the Rangers. Yeah, you know the Rangers. The Rangers didn't have a terrible month in a sense of like sub 500 right you look up in their august they were over 500 but for me it was just the stretch that they went on we saw the longest losing streak of their season happen they're currently in third place blowing the largest divisional lead in major league baseball and that is the reason that they are here they did make they made moves at the trade deadline they've they made a lot of moves they were very active yeah. And then to see them go on the longest losing streak of their season and to blow that big division lead and no longer be first and no longer be second. You know, they're now it's, I don't even say it. The, the whole thing's a jumbled mess. It, they're all so within like a game or two. They're all within a game. But they blew that huge lead they in did. August, went on their longest losing streak. And for me, they are my number three biggest loser of August. All right, moving on to number two. <laughs> We've been talking about them a lot this month. The New York Yankees, what happened? That is a good question. What happened? Well, they stunk. That yeah. is what happened. They went 10 and 17 on the month. They went from an above 500 baseball team to a below 500 team. And it is the latest in a season. We have seen the New York Yankees under 500 in a long, long time. This is a great tweet here. The Mariners won 21 games in August. The Yankees have won 21 games since June 27th. Not good. <laughs> Obviously, record on the field says bad. The playoffs are not happening. No. They're putting guys on waivers. They are waving the white flag on this season. 
but it is just it's a mess it's there's drama involved now what do you do with the gm what do you do with the manager what do you do well you don't do anything with the owner because he's the owner but yep. like what is hal steinbrenner the the is he doing it right you know george steinbrenner was doing it right is is how the same what is brian cashman doing brian cashman was there for many of the glory years as well but is it is he still the right answer is Aaron Boone the right answer? All of these questions are coming about because the New York Yankees are just in a downward spiral and it's not pretty. It's not mm -hmm. fun. It's not exciting. It just, it's, it's boring for the Yankees. You got Aaron Judge, who's Aaron Judge. You have Garrett Cole, who's one of the best pitchers in baseball. But there's just so many like question marks and the Yankees left themselves in a place where if they dealt with a single injury on the season, they were going to be in trouble. And they've been in a lot of trouble this year. Yeah, their season ended when Aaron Judge got hurt in L.A. running in the outfield trying to catch that ball and running through the Dodgers bullpen fence. Like, that yeah. was it. Season ended there. They never recovered. Yeah. <sighs> this leads us to our number one loser, losers, loser of August. And it's just, I at this point, it's just like WTF is happening with this team. Uh, the Angels. I don't, I don't even have words to describe how crazy and bad this organization is right now. Well, I, I don't think the gap between three, two, and one here is massive. Oh, yeah. The, the, the gap between the Yankees and the Angels of, of the loser of the month is, is massive. And I talked about it a ton yesterday. Or we talked yeah. about it a, a ton. And the decision that they made at the, at the waiver the, all the trade pickups that they made, they put them all on the waiver wire. So they basically acquired all of these new players going for it and traded away a lot of their farm system to acquire players for 30 days and then put them on waivers and lose them for nothing. It was perhaps the most disastrous month for an organization in the history of baseball because you decide to keep Shohei, you take him off the trade block, you go ahead and make a bunch of trades to surround him and trade away your farm system to do it. And then once you make all of those trades, you go on the longest losing streak of the season. Yeah. You play yourself out of the playoff hunt. And at the end of the month, you look up and say, yep, didn't work out. All right, thanks, guys. We're going to put you on waivers to save a little bit of money. But you depleted your farm system. You've ruined your future for, for many years to come. It's just been, it's, it's, I really do think this might be the the worst month for an organization that we've ever seen. Oh, you you missed one of the biggest pieces too. Once they decided to be buyers, acquire all these players, immediately blow it, then at the end of the month, the best player in baseball, Shohei Otani, tears yeah. his UCL. Then that same night, Mike Trout goes back on the IL after coming off for one game. And then the next week, you wave all the players that you picked up. Like it was, I, I feel so sad and heartbroken for Angels fans. Yeah. It's bad. It's it, I, I don't know what to do. It's just one of these, like, what's going on? I mean, look, like, what, what, what are you doing? I said this to when they made... To save two million bucks, and now you have no farm system. I said this. Well, yeah, the, the money thing does get them under the luxury tax to get a higher pick, but, but still. Like, and I, this is what I said when they made the decision to not trade Shohei. Yeah. It was... I don't think I would do this. I don't think it's the smartest thing. No. But I do respect it. I mean, fine, you're going for it. But this this is why everyone was saying you got to just Get have some for forethought, forward thought, forethought. Does that uh, work? Forethought Yeah, work? well, think about your future. Yeah, that, like well, an that's investment, what I meant. Before an investment. Thought works. Like, yeah. So th think about the future of the organization instead of the very narrow-sighted answer, which is we have Shohei for another two months. Let's try and do well by him, which, again, I respected that decision at the time. I still respect the decision to go for it, but while also acknowledging that I don't think it was the right decision to make, and now the, the organization has really set themselves back for a long, long time. So they are my number one loser of the month. That is the Rangers, the Yankees, and the Angels, who all really wet the bed in the month of August. See, you liked it. I have a question. How are, a raise yeah, so I'm raising my okay, hand. Go ahead. How are the Mets and Padres, either of these, not on the biggest losers? They're on. The, they're the two biggest losers of the season. But the month of August is the month of August. We, I mean, the Mets canceled. The Mets were done. Yeah. The Mets traded their season away. Exactly. The Padres were probably at, at the four month. here. Okay. Um, no, they traded at uh, at 
July 31st. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. right. So in August, they had already waved the white flag, and August was just... They actually, okay, the, that's fair. The, but Mets, also, the Mets played I'm better like both in August. Of them, I just... The Mets played actually pretty well in August. The Padres were a team that decided to go for... The Mets were on it, or the Padres were four. Yeah. The, the Padres were almost three for me. I, okay. I kind of went back and forth. But for me, it was because of the big lead in the division and that the Rangers the had and losing it. Mm. Because, okay. okay, look, the Padres were... I don't know the exact number, but probably yeah. around seven games out to start the month. And you look now and it's still the same thing, you know? It's yeah. just... I'm in on your one and twos. I would have switched the two threes on on both of these. But that's good. They were your fours. Uh, close. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if the Phillies. Phillies. Phillies were really good. Yeah, they're yeah. probably four. Yeah. Huh. Thanks. All right. Cool. Good stuff. Good talk. All right, we are back with the baseball world's favorite daily game, Immaculate Grid. Ben is going to have 90 seconds to name nine players. Now, if you're new to this game, you have nine squares with three rows. On the top and bottom, there will be teams or accolades, and each square needs to line up with whatever team or accolade that the row matches up with. Now, Tim, uh, Ben's been pretty good with this. You got all of them last time. Last you time. win Immaculate with, day. like, two seconds to spare. I, I watched it back. Eight seconds. Whoa. It was eight seconds okay. to spare. That's the, fair. The Buner was just a harder name to spell back. We had, so it wasn't you. You're blaming Logan. It wasn't me. It was you. Okay. As in not yeah. you. but Not me. Whoever it's was, never my, who it's was never ever, my fault. Who was ever <laughs> typing it in? Are you ready? I know you get nervous. I do. I do. Yes. Yeah? I am ready. Are we ready? Is our crew ready? Again, I don't know the teams yet. Okay. So I have 90 seconds and have not yet even been. T I don't know anything, which makes it. Oh, that's difficult. saying a lot. Way to, way to admit that for the first time. <laughs> I don't know anything. I know nothing. I know nothing. <laughs> okay. We're talking about Immaculate Crid. Uh, and life. Not life. Or life? life? Who knows? Okay. Are you guys ready? Let's get it on the board. 90 seconds on the clock. Ready, set. Try to be immaculate, Ben. Okay. Lay of the lamb. We got Braves, Mets, Cubs up top, Twins, Pirates, Rays on the left. Okay. No accolades. Okay. Braves, Braves, Twins, Braves, Pirates. Um, Braves, Pirates, I'll go Charlie Morton. Um, Braves, Rays. Uh, Nick Anderson. Braves, Twins? Uh, I th uh is Billy Hamilton right? I'm going to go Billy Hamilton. 45 seconds. Yeah, yes. I got it. Okay. Whoa, okay. 0.7%. Um, uh, Mets. 35 Mets, seconds. Mets, Twins. Uh, Mets, Twins. Oh, I know this guy. Their family. Uh, Frank Viola. Frank Viola. Mets, Twins. Uh, okay, I'm going to go to the Cubs. Cubs, Twins. Cubs, Pirates. Uh, Cubs, seconds. Pirates. Jamison Tyon. Cubs, Rays. Cubs Rays. Cubs Rays. Cubs. Ten seconds. Um, Cubs Rays. Ben Zobrist. Met, I don't think I'm getting anything. Mets. Mets. Yeah. Okay. 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 That's our time here. That's four plus two. That's six. Six today. <laughs> Ninety seconds. Not bad. This was. T there's no. There were no accolades. That makes it. Yeah, but like you were a huge Braves fan, so I figure like that's kind of like your Detroit situation. That I got all those. Yeah. Took you long though. Took you like forty-five seconds to get the first three, which it should have been faster. That's okay. I'm just here. Are to judge. you now critiquing my immaculate grid? <laughs> I am. I am. Slow. I am. I Slow. Am. I am. I feel like that was pretty good for, for what I'm given here. You kidding me? The Frank Viola pull? That was great. Come on. A little love. That was great. Billy, 0.7%. That was Billy Hamilton only point. People forget. People forget Billy Hamilton played for a lot of teams. Yeah. That was a good job. Oh, now it's a good job. Yeah, for that player. Not the whole thing. <laughs> he went immaculate last time. This was like, eh. See, six that's out of the nine. worry. I went eight in the I very know. first one we did, and then I'm like, well, the only way I can top it is now. Every time I don't go immaculate, it's yeah, gonna it's feel gonna like, like a letdown. Okay. It is. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Okay. Um, all right. I'm excited for this next. Uh, we have someone joining the show.
Disha Thosar is a writer for us on MLB on Fox. She does a lot with the Mets and the New York Yankees as well. But there is a lot to talk about in the news lately with, well, one, the Mets as a whole. It just feels like there's a lot of drama surrounding that locker room and everything. But that includes Pete Alonzo. And it came out recently that more drama thrown in the fire. Pete is toxic according to some rumors disha wrote about all of those rumors as well as we're going to talk about the trade rumors involved there as well and what those contract negotiations are looking like with pete alonzo so let's welcome in now disha thosar all right pumped to have on now disha thosar who writes for us here at mlb on fox and just wrote an article that you can find on foxsports.com and the app called is pete alonzo toxic ridiculous but the mets and polar bear are in need of a cold compromise disha first off thank you for joining as you have a, a few times now always fun to have you on but secondly where did this come from where where did the rumor of pete alonzo being toxic even start yeah so this started over a new york sports radio show uh coming from sal licata and some of the other guys he works with over at wfan uh, really just saying that the one of the reasons the Mets must be losing is because they have a clubhouse problem. Uh, and uh, their way of saying the clubhouse problem is that Pete is toxic and a part of the core uh, that is causing this uh, rift and this toxicity in the clubhouse. And what I wrote is, is that it is absolutely not. And uh, I, of course, wanted to kind of get in there and, and check with the clubhouse and players and staffers to see not only how they felt about that report, but really what is going on with uh, Pete's future and, and why sort of uh, they haven't been able to reach this contract extension yet. So that was sort of where my idea for this story originated and to shut down some of these rumors that, that really uh, had no basis uh, that Pete Alonzo or the Mets clubhouse is toxic. So I, I know you wrote about it and I'm interested about what, what you said and heard from other players, but also your opinion, Disha, you're in the locker room all the time. You, you know, the guys you're around and obviously you don't like no closed doors, what's going on, but Hey, I've been a lot in a lot of locker rooms. It's not a lot of difference in personalities about the guys. So you know, what's going on there. What is your opinion on the matter? Yeah, and, and I think this is important sort of of how my first inclination was that, of course, it's not toxic and, and why sort of this rumor from WFAN really irked me is because I have been in a toxic Mets clubhouse and that was my first year on the beat when Mickey Calloway was manager. Uh, they had a lot of disruption going on. Still, they hadn't yet sold the team, the Wolpons, to Steve Cohen. Uh, all of this is stemming, of course, from Mickey Calloway originally, but all of this sort of disruption function in the front office that had led to an actually toxic clubhouse. Uh, so this is what we're dealing with now, not only since Steve Cohen took over, but especially this season and last year when the Mets had their 101 win season, it is not toxic. This is a group that really gets along with each other. Uh, not only is that sort of important to build the culture that Steve Cohen wants to to bring to the Mets, but they've been taking it in stride and it starts with guys like Pete Alonzo, Francisco Lindor, and Brandon Nimmo, who two of those three have signed long-term deals with the Mets. So this isn't coming from nowhere. Really, this has been a shift that started a few years ago. But the reason that I know it's not toxic is because I've seen what a toxic clubhouse within the Mets looks like. Uh, so that was where sort of my stance on it originated before I even talked to anyone uh, within the team. And, and sort of my belief was confirmed once I did start talking to people. It just feels feels like everyone is looking for an excuse and sometimes the season just stinks you know sometimes it doesn't go the way you have you, you wanted it to and that's okay but it just feels like the second something is off everybody's pointing the fingers at Max Scherzer or pointed the finger at Justin as he walked out the door or pointing the finger at Pete Alonzo or Francisco Lindor and uh from from everything I've heard and and I think you've at least talked to Max about this but both of these, both Justin and Max have both spoken out about how that was a great locker room. I, I love being a part of that locker room. It just didn't work. Yeah, exactly. And and you nailed it in that there's a lot of this narrative that the, the clubhouse is toxic. So that must be 
the reason they're losing. Look at all the other teams that are not doing well this year. Padres, Yankees, that looked like they were going to be contenders at the start of the season. I haven't heard any clubhouse narratives surrounding <laughs> those teams. So that's sort of where this, this started, at least for me, is to kind of get this uh, Mets for clicks, this narrative that starts yeah. around them that you can really just poke at holes and and get a narrative going because that's the way it's been for this organization and this franchise for years for decades but really i think what steve cohen is trying to do and it is working uh is to make sort of this culture better there so when reports like this come out and not only do they they gain a lot of traction i think that's the problem is that yeah. this kind of works on the mets fan base and that they are of course an emotional fan base we all know that but uh reports like this are I think they have to be debunked if they're not true. So that was sort of my reason for going yeah. into it. And like you said, I talked to Max and Justin about it, who were here for sort of a, a cup of coffee within Steve Cohen's tenure with the Mets. But but they, of course, had a good handle of what was going on within the clubhouse. Yeah, it's been cool to see the the players come out and, and stick up for each other, whether they're still there or not. The, that locker room has has stood up for each other amidst all of the, the rumors here. The, the last rumor I want to ask you about, Disha, is – these trade trade rumors with Pete Alonzo. What is what's the latest there? Where does Pete and the team stand in terms of potential contract negotiations? Are these rumors valid? Like where is Pete Alonzo with the New York Mets? Yeah, so definitely what we know for a fact is that both sides want to stay. Pete wants to stay a Met. The Mets want him to stay with them long term. This is always, always, always going to come down to money. And the contract extension so far has not worked out because both sides are not agreeing yet. And those are the sort of the details that are not being released. We've heard from Ken Rosenthal that the Brewers were interested, the Cubs were interested. All of that is sort of coming from outside of the Mets organization. Of course, teams are interested in Pete Alonso leading up to his free agency. And, and that sort of noise is only going to be even dialed up as the months proceed into the off season. But I think what fans especially should pay attention to is what the Mets are putting out there, what Pete is putting out there. And what we've learned from both of them is that they want a deal to work out. So this might get uh, drawn out. This might go all the way up until Alonzo's actual free agency. If he doesn't get traded before then, uh, if he does get traded, I think Mets fans especially should keep in mind that really just means uh, the, these two sides did not meet on the asking price. Uh, I don't think it will get that far. Personally, I think the Mets will keep Pete and find a way to do it, uh, but it might get sort of uh, Aaron judge level ugly before it reaches that point. I can see Pete really exploring, free agency just like Brandon Nimmo did yeah. and uh, see sort of what the offers are what teams he could end up with before potentially he ultimately decides to end up with the Mets so this might get drawn out and I think uh, fans should definitely keep sort of a clear clear head about it which of course the Mets fan base is, is known for <laughs> yeah Disha thank you so much for hopping on I know uh, things have there's been a lot of drama up there in, in New York this year and both of the teams, the Yankees and the Mets, who you both cover very well. So everybody can can read her stuff on the Fox or Fox Sports app and including the most recent article she just wrote about Pete Alonzo and the Mets. So, Disha, thank you so much. Thanks, Ben. Thanks for having me on. Of course. See ya. Thanks to Disha for joining me. Disha's great, by the way. We've we had her on the show a lot. Yeah, and we run into her all the time when we're on the like World Series and yeah. stuff. She's great. She's great. We love her insight. Yeah. More Disha. <laughs> More Disha More is always Disha. a good thing. So that thanks again to her for joining. Alex, yep. it is now time for a Friday staple. Yep. Things that make you go, hmm? Mm -hmm. And boy, do we oh have a lot like this all week. All over the place. Like, yeah. A lot of a lot of stuff went down this week. Yeah, a lot of stuff. So let's get started with our first things that make you go, hmm. Jose Ramirez's scoreboard graphic at Target Field. Yeah, we got a lot of scoreboard stuff this year. I'm into it. A lot it. of scoreboard stuff going on. So Jose Ramirez uh, came out to the plate at Target Field, and the the scoreboard read, currently one and zero with a first round. Uh, we're the first round knockout of Tim Anderson and a no decision against Miguel Cabrera. So playing into the, <laughs> the fight the with fight. Tim Anderson, the, the, the Miguel Cabrera thing, when Miggy was in town during his retirement celebration tour, yeah. basically, uh, 
Jose Ramirez was up there with him to give him his gift. And Miggy basically like turned and like acted like he was going to fight. But I don't know if you saw it. Jose Ramirez was like, not having, he was like, he did not want to, he did yeah. not want to do that. Yeah. Didn't want to talk about it. So the scoreboard saying one and oh against Tim Anderson with a no decision against Miggy uh, was great. I, scoreboard operators are, they're, they're, they're becoming more of a part of the baseball experience. And yeah. I am here for it. Like fun social media, but like, Score, on the and, scoreboard, right, yeah. which I'm into. All right, let's move on to our next things that make you go, hmm, we've been talking a lot about this team yesterday and today. But the Angels players who homered after they were wavered. Yeah, look, we've talked a lot about the Angels, as you said, yeah. and it, this is the ultimate things that make you go, hmm. So it had to at least be in yeah. the segment. But the the angels acquired all of these new players and they put all of them on waivers. And then the day they put all of them on waivers, Randall Grichik homers or Hunter Renfro homered. And then Grichik ended up homering. I mean, it's just all of these guys are now like, it's like they're on a job. They were on a job interview Yeah, and they were just like, okay, we need to show out for our, for our potential suitors. Yep. And that's what happened. Hunter Renfro going to the Reds, we heard yesterday. Mm -hmm. That's a really big pickup for them. Guardians picking up quite Many a few Many of the pitchers, uh, Lucas Giolito, Reynaldo Lopez, Matt Moore, all going to the Guardians. Randall Grichik did not get picked up, but just a, just a lot, a lot going on uh -huh. with the Angels. We've discussed this at length, but of course, they're put on waivers and then they start showing out yeah. and hitting homers. Well, I feel like any player who ends up leaving the angels ends up does it, doing really well. And this is kind of like their first, first foot out the door. <laughs> I don't know. It's weird. It's weird. All right. On to our next things that make you go. Hmm. And this one's terrifying. Like, honestly, a white Sox fan sneaks a gun into the stadium in the folds of their belly fat. Yep. That's about all you got to know. That is exactly what happened. There was, this is actually a really scary situation. Terrifying. And there were two people that were, there were two people that were shot at, uh, at the stadium and nobody really knew what was going on. And then it came out that it was reported. The shooting that happened at guaranteed rate field during a white Sox game was indeed an accidental jit discharge by one of the women that was grazed by the bullet. She reportedly snuck the gun in past metal detectors, hiding it in the folds of her belly fat. Like, how does that happen? Doesn't it, like, even if you have, like, metal from surgery in your body, you set off metal detectors, like, at the airport. How does this not, how does this not set up? This is the whole point and the reason that you have metal detectors is to find weapons. So I, I imagine. It's an ultimate fail. I imagine it is an ultimate fail. And again, there's been a lot of uh, security stuff with Ronald Acuna yeah. and now this. Luckily, uh, luckily this wasn't uh, as bad of a situation as it could have been because somebody was bringing a gun into a baseball stadium and it just was accidentally shot and grazed uh, apparently the person and and one other. Um I, I, my guess is that it was a super small gun and the metal detector just wasn't set to the right. Um, Are you an expert in metal detectors? I actually have worked a lot with. Oh, you have? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, I know nothing. So I'm like, please. I'll yeah. believe anything you say so right there, now. So there's a certain, uh, like, I don't know, I want to say like threshold, but a okay. certain level that you can set it to. And um, it, you know, like, so, so you can set it to, if you walk through with a phone in your pocket, it's not going Got off. It. But if you set it high enough, a phone will certainly set it off. So maybe that's my guess is it wasn't, or, or it was just a, a complete mess up on the outside. And no, I, I, I don't know what happened, but again, it's unacceptable. And again, as I talked about yesterday with the Acuna situation, this should be a very eye opening situation and it shouldn't take something catastrophic happening for us to realize that there is a mistake and that needs to be fixed. Security of baseball games got to be better. This can't be allowed, obviously. Uh, and it obviously is something that is the things that make you go, hmm, because we are able to now step back from the situation that was uh, thankfully not a super serious one and look at it as this woman snuck a gun in, in the folds, the way it was written, the in the folds you of can, her like, belly see fat. It. I can like visualize it. It's like, oh, terrifying. <laughs> I, no, um, I like literally had nightmares about this. Yeah. When I was sideline for angels. 
You have a lot of nightmares. Well, I always think of worst case scenario. (laughs) (laughs) I always think I'm the kind of person that like plans for like my mind immediately goes, okay, what's worst case scenario? If something happened here, where do I go? How do I get out of this? I just always over plan for worst case, especially like in the world we live in now, you kind of have to. It's like not uncommon. And those are one of the things I thought about because you're standing there on the field looking at a camera with tens of thousands of people just like there right behind you. See you're my, a sitting duck. my mind went to what if she lost the gun in the wrong fold of her belly fat? Like what if she went looking and was like, I thought it was oh my there. God, gross. That's where my mind Stop. goes. We go in way different way directions. Different directions. <laughs> I go dark. Um, I go luckily dark. everybody, everything is, is okay. And the situation wasn't, was, was not bad, but it's just a very alarming and scary situation. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to our next things that make you go. Hmm. Yankees dissatisfied with results, but not with the process. Yeah, this was huh. uh, this was a statement that came out in, in a written article from um, from Andy Andy Martino, and it came out basically saying that this is from what he's gathered inside the the Yankees and spending a lot of time around there that they are extremely dissatisfied with their results, but they are not dissatisfied with the personnel and the process involved. And to me, that's a complete lack of an ability to look in the mirror and acknowledge their wrongdoings. To me, that's them saying, you know what? The results weren't there. And that's, you know, sometimes players don't perform to their ability instead of looking in the mirror and realizing that they set the team up for failure or put a team on the field that the second any injury occurred, wasn't going to be able to do what they needed to do. It was a team without depth. It was a team without speed. It was a speed, a, t- a team that was not dynamic, dynamic. They just, they did. And this, this year, this was rock bottom for the Yankees. You know, of the, of all the outcomes possible, you know, there's certain teams like with the A's. You could have said, well, worst case scenario is this. Best case is there a 500 team, maybe somehow. Yankees was best case scenario with the team is, again, maybe an ALCS. And worst case is this. This is worst case scenario. And is it underperformance by players? Sure, there's, there's some of that. But it's a lack. It's the lack of feel. It's a lack of understanding from the front office that the reason they're here is them. They're the reason. Not not because of underperformance on the field. Sure, there's some of that, but they put together a product and a team that just, I, I feel like, didn't have the ability to, if they dealt with an injury, an injury to Aaron Judge or an injury to Stanton or an injury to Anthony Rizzo, that it wasn't going to be able to compete with the teams that it needed to to get into the playoffs. So, yeah, this one is just a head scratcher of like, what do you what do you mean you're not dissatisfied with the personnel and the process? How is that possible mm-hmm. that you're not dissatisfied with that? You have to be. You have well, to. Well, it's just that it's a different mentality and it's an unrecognizable Yankees franchise right now compared to the Yankees legendary i guess like what history to now. i don't know if you've heard 27 yeah, rings uh, kind Alex, of a big deal. 27 rings kind of a big deal haven't had one in long long time, long time but long time yeah all right on to our next things that make you go hmm the twins and guardians ending to their game on wednesday this was chaos <laughs> it was madness so Yuan Yuan Duran was on the mound, one of the nastiest closers in the game. Throws 103, nasty splitter, and he was on the mound with second and third, and two outs, two strikes on the batter, down to his very last strike, and it was a big game against a division rival, a team that's trying to squeak back into the division, and he throws a pitch. That is a, a wild pitch. It goes directly like underneath or behind Bo Naylor, who's batting. And he goes to get out of the way and swings the bat through the zone. Now, if you're watching, you can see the replay of this. He literally like starts to almost kind of like, and not, it's not even really a check swing. He just goes to get out of the way, but it, the bat legitimately swings as if he was swinging at a pitch through the zone but a strike was not called and it ended up long story short. They ended up 
losing the game. The twins lost. That would have been strike three had it been called a strike. And it just caused quite the uproar of like, wait a second, that guy has a bat in his hands. Yeah. And we can clearly see in the replay that that was a full swing. He yeah. swung the bat. Now it's not intentional though. Cause that he is was trying to get out of the intent way. Intent is yeah. by letter of the law involved here. It created quite the stir on social media, but in terms of the law, yeah. I guess it's baseball. It's a Rules. rule. Not yeah, yeah. <laughs> the law states was their intent to swing the bat. And here the intent was to, save your life and not get hit by a, a baseball coming and in your direction. you're kind of like going in that direction. So yeah. naturally you're going to follow through to get to the ground to put your hands down. That's yes. what you have to do. Yes. So just, but the, just the way it ended, like for that to be two strikes, two outs, th that could have ended the game. And I know that ball ended up going to the backstop. So that's a whole other thing. He could have maybe gotten to first, yeah. but for them to end up losing the game from that. And then Brutal. obviously once they lost, this became quite the, well, that guy swung his bat earlier. Uh -huh. I mean, did he technically swing his bat? Sure. Did he technically, was it a strike was based off of the rules? Was he trying to swing the ball? No. No. He was trying to get out of the way. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Okay. We got one more thing that make you go, hmm. Sports photographer Ken Griffey Jr. I love this. I love it so much. Ken Griffey Jr. was seen, not just seen, he was a photographer yep. at the soccer game that, uh, Lionel Messi was at Inter between Inter Miami and Nashville and King Griffey Jr. Was one of the guys, of course, rocking the backwards hat, yep. wearing the vest, the media photographer vest. Did he had a nice, wear? a nice camera. Like I love this. And Is there I, anything he can't do? It made me I, wonder, <laughs> it, it made me wonder what, yeah, he can't play for the New York Yankees. I don't know if you saw that, but he came out during his career and said, if the New York Yankees were the only team offering me a contract, I would I would not play for them. I would okay, never that, but play. But he won't. That's not can't. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe he can do everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it just also makes me wonder, like, what goes on up there in Seattle that turns the like Randy Johnson, really good photographer now. Like Randy I mean, Johnson, you saw everything looks like a postcard. It's stunning. True. Seattle is absolutely beautiful. True. I went up there for a few days and came away saying I should take photos of this place. Maybe that's I should what, be a photographer. I should be a photographer. We should be photographers. <laughs> that's yeah. what's happening next. I love that. I love it's it. It's just greatness, like appreciating greatness too. Yeah, really good stuff. Yeah. Good, good stuff. Good, good stuff. You know what else is good, good stuff? What? This weekend series that we have going on right now with yes. the Braves and the Dodgers. It is our tale of the tape this week. Things got started last night on Thursday. And this is, these are the two best teams in baseball right now, in my opinion. Obviously, the two best teams in the National League. It could be an NLCS preview. Ben and I are going to go through and we're going to share who we think has better offense, defense, managers, starters, and bullpen. And ultimately, who's going to take the series this weekend? Yeah. I'm excited. I know. Same, same. We don't, we have no idea what, what the other has chosen. So let's get started. <laughs> I feel with, like I um, have an idea of what Alex eh, picks. Maybe. Uh, let's get started with the offense. <laughs> the Braves. Okay. It, it, this is the Braves. The Braves are the best offense in baseball. It's the Braves and they're the best offense I've seen in a long, long time. The difference between the Atlanta Braves and every other team in baseball is seven, eight, nine in that lineup. Yes. One through six is also arguably one of the best, but the depth in the lineup is unmatched. The Braves are the best offense in baseball. They just broke their all time franchise home run single season record. And it did it before the calendar turned to September. They are the better offense. These are the two best offenses oh my in God. baseball. Did you go? Oh, my God. These are the two oh my best God. offenses in baseball, number one and number two. And the Dodgers are coming off the best month in August. It's in L.A. Mookie is having had the month of his career continuing going. I'm going with the Dodgers because you know why? This could go either way. No, it can't. Yes, it can. No, it can't. Yes, it can. The Braves with are the this best offense, offense in it baseball by far. Number one and number two. Okay. Yeah. Who's number two? The Dodgers. But right now in this <laughs> series, I think because they are coming off such an incredible month of August, it's at home in LA. Mookie is also coming off an incredible month. Freddie's heating up. It can really go either way. I know Atlanta is stacked top to bottom, but this is just this series. What I think is going to happen. 
I, I'm expecting it to be an offensive explosion between these two teams. I can't. I can't. With yeah, you. you can. I can't. Yeah, you can. Wait, since you can't. You just started. You can't get mad for it's one and two. Literally, these are the two best offenses. Anything can happen. I'm saying this weekend. Dodgers are going to go But you've never off. done your answer like that with offense. You've never gone We've this never weekend, I just think. one and two. Yes, we have. We've had Surely we three. have. Surely we have. We've had this matchup before? I also don't and think I it's, I don't Dodgers? think the gap is close. I don't think it's close. And the Braves are, the Braves might be the cool. best offense I've cool. ever seen. We'll, we'll see. Well, of course we'll see. Anything yeah. could happen. The Dodgers could win the series. Exactly. But to, to pick the Dodgers offense over the Braves is they just. They just had the best month. They just had the best month in August. It, their offense went off. Why they there's you can't you can't get mad for this pick. Sure, I can. You have your right to to pick them, but I cool. can I have my right to get mad at you for picking them. All right, let's go. I've defense. never gotten mad at a pick of yours. That one's just wrong. The Braves are the better offense. Okay. Yep. Let's go. Defense. Defense. Uh defense. I went with the Dodgers here. Mm-hmm. Um the, the, the better defense. Yeah. The Braves are, I think Braves are middle of the pack defensively, I think. And the, the Dodgers, I, I don't, the Alex will come with the numbers. I just, I, I watch Dodgers are good defensively. And Mookie Betts is Mookie Betts is like the ultimate wild card of you can play him in right. You can play him yep. a second. You can play him at short. Freddie's good over at first. I mean, they just, it's a really, really, really good defense, I think. And I went with them. All right. I also went with the Dodgers. I'll give you the numbers to back it up. Uh, I mean, numbers wise, they're better defensively in almost every category. Better fielding percentage, fewer errors committed, more double plays turn, better ultimate zone run save and run save by fielding range is better for the Dodgers. Let's move on to the managers, shall we? Yes. Who are you, who are you taking? Yeah, oh, mate, Brian yeah. Snicker. I, I, Brian Snicker, uh, World Series champion. I also really, I just like the whole staff. I know we do a manager specifically, but yeah. I was actually, I was just talking to uh, Adam Jones about this recently, and he was ranting and raving about the Atlanta Braves uh, coaching staff and how he thinks that it, like person to person, from manager to bench coach to, you know, analytics guy to the offensive coordinator. He ranted and raved about the Atlanta Braves uh, coaching staff, Ron Washington, Walt Weiss on there, but manager wise, Brian Snitker, uh, I'm going to take him again. I know. Uh, yeah. To me, it was the, the world series championship, the ability to, I don't need to go. Why Dave Roberts? You tell me that. You're welcome. Okay. Yeah, no, I did take the Dodgers and Dave Roberts. Uh, they're pretty darn close. Both managers are world series champs. Both have been the best team in their division. Both started managing in 2016. Uh, Braves have finished first in the NLEs five of the seven seasons under Snickers manager. And the Dodgers have finished first in the NOS six of seven seasons with Roberts. So that is the one. There we go. Just to. To give you some. Though if yeah, there yeah. was a, if that was, if that was flipped, you it's, still would have so gone. I would have. Yeah. yeah. Okay. My team. But if, I thought, I, if, I, if I'm going to okay. have like a neck and neck, I'm always going to go with my team. Okay. Braves were your team growing up. All right. And let's Padres go are also, to Padres, your team. No, Angels. They were, team. they were a team that I enjoyed to go watch when I was in college. Cause I went to San Diego state and mm -hmm. I was down there and went to a lot of their games. Okay. All right. Let's get to the starters. Who you got? Braves. Yeah. Spencer Strider, Max Freed. Uh, this this rotation, Charlie Morton, Bryce Elder. Uh, I know the numbers also back that up. The Braves rotation is better than the Dodgers rotation, though. The Dodgers is it's getting better. It's getting healthier. Uh, Kershaw, Julio appears to be getting better in the rotation. Lance Lynn has been good so far for them. Again, I, I don't know the results of what happened in the Thursday night game when he pitched, but Lance Lynn has certainly been helpful to that rotation since yeah. he's come over. Um, but the Braves rotation to me with one Strider, who's uh, NL Cy Young candidate, certainly Max Freed has come back and been healthy and, and really good so far. So to me, starting pitching Atlanta Braves. I also went with the Braves for starting pitching. And all the big names that you mentioned are pitching this weekend. I'm going to, I'm going to go through the probable starters. Thursday was Spencer Strider versus Lance Lynn. Great matchup. Friday, Max Freed against Julio Urias. Saturday, Bryce Elder versus the Dodgers haven't announced anyone yet. It's TBD. And then Sunday, Charlie Morton against Bobby Miller. So based on this matchup, I'm taking the Braves. Okay. Bullpen. 
Uh, Braves bullpen. I am, you, you know, uh, I'm a believer in the Dodgers, but not in their bullpen. Yeah. I, that bullpen is, is not very good. Um, the Braves have a really good bullpen, second best bullpen ERA in, in all of baseball this season. Rysel Iglesias in the back end. AJ Minter has been good. Joe Jimenez, friend of mine, locker mate in the minor leagues uh, has been really good for them lately. So um, I went Braves here. I also went Braves. The Braves bullpen has been extremely effective all season and it's stronger than the Dodgers. Bottom line. All right. I think we know who we're taking for this series. I, 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 I still can't believe it's one it. And I, two. Can't, I can't it's believe one it. And two. I can't believe and it. And they're coming off the best month in August. I went and Mookie just jumped like it's back. At the, it's we have the four top NL MVP favorites in this series right now, which is why it's, I, you can go and make an argument for either either side, and I feel comfortable having Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman on the Dodgers. But the and argument is Ronald Acuna Jr. medals, and you're no, saying, no, no, yeah, no, top no, to no, bottom, no, it's no, seven through nine. No, That's the part that you're you're saying why the Braves are better. But I'm saying in this series, they're at home. I'm going to say the Dodgers' offense is going to is going to be better this weekend. If if the series were just the if it were just Mookie and Freddie alternating hitting and Ronald Acuna and Matt Olson alternating hitting, I'd take the Dodgers. But that's not how baseball works. You got nine guys. Yeah. And I think this weekend the Dodgers offense is going to be stronger. But that's just a that's a hope. No. Uh, it's it's coming off the month of August. Then why did the you pick the, the Braves starting pitching? Because the starting pitching is better for the Braves. So if you why would you think that their offense is going to uh, be based better? Based on the matchups. But the Braves have the better matchup pitching wise. They're not facing the Dodgers best guys. Uh, the smile. No. You got where I was going there. No. <laughs> <But> <laughs> mm -mm. Okay. We're not going to get, I, but I will say I was driving in today thinking, I don't, where is Alex going to get to three here with the Dodgers? I know she's going to go Dave Roberts defense. Uh, yeah. Defense is where I'm going with Dodgers, but I don't see how she gets to three. And I did not think, it, I didn't think it would be, I didn't think it would be offense, but. You're welcome. That's right. I didn't say. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, all right. Is that, uh, that's the end of Friday show. Uh, Saturday, everyone. Saturday, big day. Saturday with Smoltz, as it always is, every single Saturday here on Flippin' Bats. And also, Alex has some big news about Saturday as well for her personally. I do. I got a, a Fox Sports radio show Saturdays. Um, Fox Sports Saturdays with Alex Curry and Monty Bolaños, uh, 1 to 3 p.m. Pacific every Saturday. It's going to be a blast. We got to get you on. We're going to talk some baseball. You, you want to come on my show? Huh? It's going to be a blast. Gonna be, you want to come hang out on my show? Yeah, sure. Yeah. No, well, this is. Uh, what are we going to talk about? I'm really excited. Baseball. I'll okay. bring you on to talk baseball. You can talk, it's all sports. I, it's, I can talk anything. I can talk you want. whatever I want. I can talk football. You can talk football. Cowboys. You want to talk football? I love football. I can okay. talk. I can talk. We can talk anything. Food. Your Cowboys. How to be better at rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> whatever. You be the best. Whatever. I got you. Yeah. That's great. Congratulations. Thank that you. That is cool. Thank That's you. Cool. I'm really excited about so, it. So, uh, Saturday with Smoltz tomorrow. And you can listen to Fox Alex Sports Saturdays live on the radio with Alex Curry and Monty. It's live, right? It's live. live. Yeah. Cool. One to 3 p.m. I'll tune in. Thank you. I'll tune in. Cool. Um, that does it for Friday. Enjoy the weekend, everyone. A lot that you can listen to on Saturday. Also, a lot that you can watch this weekend. Braves Dodgers is a fantastic series. Perhaps. NLCS preview yep. time will tell but as of now all signs point to that but enjoy the weekend everybody thank you for listening or watching make sure you're subscribed wherever you listen to your podcast Apple Spotify hit that follow subscribe button we're also on all social media including YouTube where you can watch every single thing we do at flipping bats pod for all of those that does it everyone enjoy the weekend until tomorrow peace